What's up guys? Mr. Lee Redman here with episode number one of my new series and I am in Belgium with Bruges second biggest side, Circle Bruges. Now I don't know why but I, I quite like Circle. I don't actually I can't put my finger on it. I always I seem to have teams all over the country, um all over the country, all over Europe, um so as far as Asia as well sometimes where I just quite like them, don't know why. But for some reason, Belgium is Sir Clay, and they're, they're not the greatest, to be fair. Obviously, they've got their more illustrious neighbours, Club Bruges, and then you've obviously got Anderlecht, Standard Liège, as well, Genk and Ghent, who have got, um, obviously, a bit more publicity in the last couple of years. For some, but for some reason, I decided I want to be um, Sir Clay. So, um, I've never done Belgium before, actually, despite the fact that they're... Obviously, their um, oh, their international team has started to play really well the last couple of seasons. Um, I've never done Belgium, so I fancy the change. So I'm going to do this one with Sir Clay. What I've done so far is um, I haven't done many transfers. I don't think we'll have a look at that in a minute. I've done pre-season, just coming up on the first game of the season. So what we'll do is, guys, we'll actually go into transfers first. So no, we haven't actually brought anyone in. Um, but we've sent out Stephen Biel, Jerry Bajios, I think is how you say it, Gilles De Welly and Gilkey De Konink, I think is how you say it, to Rosalier and Turnhot. Apologies f to any Belgian fans out there with the pronunciations. Um, normally I'm pretty decent with pronunciations, but they, they were pretty awful to be fair. One of the reasons I haven't brought many t uh, players in is because, as you can see, I'm nine grand over my wage budget. That is the problem, um, unfortunately. So I haven't been able to bring anyone in. I'm hoping to bring in some players in on loan, uh, but I don't know if that's going to happen at all. Um, we'll have a look at the fixtures, guys. So here's here's the friendlies. We beat the under twenty ones three one. It was a hat trick by Kamanaga and a Steph Wilson goal. Um, but obviously, well, I always do that game. Now I don't really think it actually does anything. To be fair, because this is your under twenty ones. I then beat French side Clermont Foot two 0 Nouts and Tuchebo put in me in front. I then beat Swiss Club de Zern, 2 0 again with Chebo and Stellians. Jeo Maria was injured. I then beat Aruna, 4 0, not quite sure where they're from to be fair. Uh, Cabanago, Chebo, Mario, and Stellians again. Where are they from? Pamplema, so they're Spanish. We then drew 1 1 with Napoli Reserves, not a bad result to be fair. Cabanago put us 1-0 up and then they equalised. They had a player sent off. How can you have a player sent off in friendlies? Especially with a straight red. That just seems stupid. And then the final friendly was against Ars Avignon. I think that's how you say it. Um, four goals in 10 minutes. Brook and Derry scoring for me. Um, we start in the Pro League, obviously. Um, play each team twice. We've got 16 teams. Play each team twice. Obviously, you got the likes of Club Bruges, Genk, um, Standard Liège, Anderlecht, Zolta Vergum, I think is how you say, who made it to Europe this year. Um, you know, actually got Genk, obviously, Ghent as well, Charleroi, who, which I always used to thought was French, to be fair. But the one thing about this league, guys, is it's weird and different. I mean, that's a stupid comment to say, and I'll show you why in a second. Obviously, you go to Spain, you go to Italy, you got England as well, obviously. And their European places are quite easy. Top four, top three, Champions League, down to about six for the Europa League, plus the cup winner. That is part of the deal here. But, let's show you how really complicated it works out. Here is Continental qualifying. We have one team qualifies for the group stage, so that will obviously be the winners, which is normally Anderlecht or standard as it used to be anyway second team will qualify for the third qualifying round that's the easy part this is where it gets weird team that i expect qualifies third will go into a playoff 
and then fourth and fifth could well actually we got one in the playoffs one in the third and one in the second qualifying round and that's depending on the Belgium Cup winner now I would say Belgium Cup winner will probably go second round so third and fourth will go playoffs and third qualifying round and then places allocated by league positions in Belgian Pro League European playoff winner gets last European place so the European I would say last European place will probably go second round uh, Belgian Cup third and then the playoff now that's not the weird thing check out this qualification top six teams qualify for the championship group so they go for a place in the Champions League seventh down to 14th goes into the European places playoff and then the bottom two qualify for playoff so look at this 15th 16th go down or go into playoffs anyway yeah that's a little weird actually go into playoffs top six so Genk and upwards just for the sake will go into Champions League and then these guys will go into the um, Europa League playoffs it's kind of cool I must admit but that is extremely bloody awkward now let's just have a look at how it goes here so three teams go into playoffs there depending on the winners of the three periods that uh, depends on the three periods obviously a winner goes up and then these guys depending on the winner of the three sections um, go into playoffs with probably the top the bottom two teams in the pro league um, not quite sure if maybe we didn't get relegations next year so as that's kind of different I must admit so you've got a really good chance of European places here what I'm gonna have a look at is the schedule and see how they do these playoffs so we've got this like championship playoffs go via leagues or groups European places I see the playoff matches trying to work out how this is done so you got one two three four eight teams now I reckon that's actually knockout stages which is could be interesting I have to say and then I think it is knockouts as well for uh, relegation I oh, see this yeah you see it's knockout stages for European places that could be kind of cool I have to admit um, which could be interesting let's, let's have a look at our finances um, obviously salaries isn't great at the moment summary I've got 1.1 million and I should I'm gonna lose about 400,000 so um, you might have to look at some of the players I've got three players four players in on loan Jeo Murillo from Sporting Lisbon 20 years of age and he doesn't look too bad to be fair there's many in day from Kordrick in who also Belgium as well actually so we may not be able to use him Nunu Race from Sporting again and Juris Delay from Nice so I might look at some um, uh, loans because I can't really bring anyone on playing the 4 2 3 1 so um, I think I do need to bring in some um, attacking midfielders to be fair so I say Delay is pretty decent with Coppins back up Steph Wills and Cornelis they're my centre backs Cornelius is right back as well, so I might need to bring some there. Um, as you can see, the attacking midfielders aren't that great. Chaber is going to be my lone striker. Um, so that's not going to be too bad. I'm quite looking forward to this, to be fair, guys. It's different. Confidence as well. They want me to be competitive in the Pro League. That's normally about top half upwards, I believe. I can't quite remember what I used to say was um, top half. Belgium Cup, they want me to get into round seven. Sounds tough, but actually, it's not as bad as it, I thought it would be. Because in Belgium, we've already got, as you can see, rounds three, four, and five already drawn. Now, that means, because I'm not actually in round five, that goes up to Division Two. So, that means I'm going to come in in round six. So, um, I should hopefully have... I only need one chance, or one game anyway, to get through it. So, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, there. Let's have a look at some information about the club. Obviously, we know their main rival is going to be. There's a Bruges derby against Club Bruges. But we also have other rivalries against Ostende, 
and Rosalair. I think Ostende are in my division. Yep, and Rosalair are in a division below. So we've obviously got a Bruges derby, and then we've got Ostende as well. And we go to Club Bruges first, which is not going to be nice. So um, it's not looking too bad. Um, Player-wise, see, I don't, don't really know any of these players. I have to be honest. So I'm really just going to look on value. And Bart Boyce, I think as you say it, uh, potential wing-back, left-back, 26 years of age, is valued at 2.7 mil. Van Aker, defensive midfielder at 2 million. 21 as well, which isn't too bad. And you got Kabanga from Congo over a million and Cornelius which is over a million as well one thing I think I have noticed actually is it's not an old squad no you've got Vjorsen 35 Smolders I recognise that name 32 Frederick Boy 31 Steph Wills and Cornelius 30 as well then the rest of them are actually 26 or below which is quite decent um, Wills was subject of the bid from Guangzhou Evergrande in China Cornelius, I don't think there's anyone who's actually made a bid for him, but he is wanted. Um, can't quite remember. Who's, who actually who wants him? Middlesbrough. Interesting. Um, so you never know what can happen there. It's, he's worth 1.2 mil, which is not bad for a 30-year-old, to be honest. So let's have a look at um, our under 21s. So potential-wise, we've got some decent players. Godet, Oyono. Koshoko, Martins, um, most of those are out on loan. My entire under 21 squad is on the loan list if they're not already out on loan. Under 19s, only four, uh, three, sorry, and they're very good um, potential anyway. I might just stick them in the under 21s to be fair, considering um, there's only three of them. So hopefully that'll be decent. Oh no, crap, that's the main squad. Where's he gone? Is he in? No, it's not him. Where is he? I can't actually remember who it was. Oh, wrong one. Wow. Strong potential for a lot of players there. I think it might have actually been this guy, to be fair. Not. I can't actually remember. That's really bad. Or it might be him, actually, Van Damme. Yeah, it's more likely going to be in Van Damme, considering his age. So, put him back into the 19s and bring Nouts up into seniors. No, yep, seniors. Put Van Damme into the 21s anyway. So, there we go. So, that's it, guys. Um... Yeah, quite looking forward to this one, I have to be honest, see how it goes. Um, Episode-wise, I'm going to do half and half, I think. Do 15, do the halfway stage, then go and do the end of it. What I'm going to do, is I'll bring out three, or f let's say four for the moment. Four episodes a season. They will be pre-season, first 15, last 15 and then i will also include the playoffs essentially because it is pretty much a guarantee we're going to make some sort of playoff not sure which one so that's how it's going to go if i maybe get to a cup final or something like that i might live stream it um if i get into maybe the two-legged playoff final for the europa league I might do that as well i do believe sir clay actually did make the um europa league a couple of years ago due to her position don't think they actually got that far to be honest with you um, so that's that I don't know what I was looking at so this is actually our history we've won the Belgian Pro League three times 1930 being the last the second division oops it was three years ago the Belgian Division 1A Division 1B a uh, third division B sorry for division A and we've won the Belgium Cup twice as well Last time being when? Oh, we fin oh, we finished runners up last year. Am I in Europe? 
can be in Europe. No. Genk obviously didn't finish high enough in the league. And we actually did it there as well. I think that's what actually got us into Europe, that one there. Um, so, last win, 1985. So, uh, I think it's time to bring some stuff back to Circle A. Uh, it would be nice to um, have to bring, bridge the gap between us and Club Bruges. Because Club used to be quite successful, but they have struggled a little bit. Ever since the rise of really like um, Standard, Genk. And all those lot so um we'll see how it goes but this is the end of this is last episode guys leave some likes last episode this is the end of the episode leave some likes leave some comments subscribe would appreciate it all tune in next time for a halfway stage review of the season let's see how it's going would be nice to be about halfway ish but we'll have to see how it goes but until then guys as always take it steady <laughs>